What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone out there had a great weekend. My name's CJ. This is Out of Bounds DFS and in today's video we're going to be looking at the prize picks board for NBA tonight. It's March 15th, almost 1 p.m. here on the East Coast, so just keep in mind that the projections you see in today's video are subject to change. Now, in today's video, we're going to do things a little bit different. Yes, we're still talking NBA, but I wanted to talk about single stat points tonight. So that's you know, real life points, assists, rebounds, all of the different single stats that they offer for NBA over on prize picks. So we're going to get into that. I'll show you a little bit about my process when I go in and do some research about single stats. And uh, we'll point out a few guys that we're liking tonight to go over or to go under uh, based on some of what we're finding. So again, we don't script any of these videos. We just freestyle all the way. So uh, you're along for the ride with me. If this is your first time to Out of Bounds, welcome. Uh, I appreciate you guys tuning into the channel. There's about 49% of you that watch these videos that aren't subscribed yet. So if you like single player daily fantasy sports, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. I try to release videos every single day covering a different variety of topics, whether it be prize picks, monkey knife fight, NBA, NHL, NBA single stat, NBA fantasy points, you name it, I'm talking about it. So hit the subscribe button definitely and uh, make sure that you don't miss out on any of my content. But without further ado, let's start getting into it. We've got a true medium-sized slate today for NBA, and we're starting things off with injury news, as we always do. Now, Mark Gasol, center for the Los Angeles Lakers, he's going to be out due to COVID protocol. Anthony Davis continues to be out for the Lakers as well. Kevin Durant, he's going to be out for a couple more games at least with a hamstring injury. DeMar DeRozan, San Antonio Spurs, he's doubtful tonight uh, due to personal reasons. Serge Ibaka for the Clippers is going to be questionable with back injury. Alfred Payton, guard for the New York Knicks, is doubtful. Blake Griffin, Brooklyn Nets, is out indefinitely. Uh, they're probably going to bring him along slowly, try to uh, you know, have him ready to go for the end of the season, making that late push and getting into the playoffs and stuff like that. So Derrick Rose, Knicks, he's out due to COVID protocol. Wayne Ellington, Detroit Pistons, doubtful with a groin. Monte Morris, Denver Nuggets, out. Davis Bertans, uh, Washington Wizards is questionable. And, uh, you know, that's it. The rest of these guys aren't really going to make a huge impact on tonight's slate. So, as I mentioned, we are going to talk single stat NBA. And uh, one of the places that I like to start here is uh, looking at the various sports books and getting an idea of what the implied totals are going to be for uh, the teams and uh, looking at the point spread and seeing if the game's going to be competitive, it's, if it's going to be a blowout. Obviously, with games that have a wider spread or larger spread, uh, there's a higher risk there for blowout. And uh, some of the superstars that we take when we uh, take those guys and we take the overs, whether it be single stat points, rebounds, assists, or even fantasy points, uh, we need those guys to play a full run of minutes in order to hit those lofty overs that we pick on prize picks. So, uh, we'll be looking at the game totals and spreads as we move through the prize picks board today. Another thing that I'll be using is a tool that you won't have access to, unfortunately, unless you're a premium member over on Roto Grinders. But this tool is their DVA tool, which is a uh, helpful tool in showing us for a player's uh, archetype, so their classification as a player. For example, Drew Holiday here, point guard, Milwaukee Bucks. You can see that his player type is combo guard. It'll show us that based on their DVA, if they're in like a plus assist matchup or a negative rebound matchup. So we'll use that as a reference point. And then I use this uh, website here. It's called lineups.com. Very helpful. It's got a lot of different stats. Shows you everything from a season perspective, 30 games, and 10 games average. So that comes in handy as well. Another thing that I like to use is good old basketballreference.com. Sometimes I can't find what I'm looking for on lineups.com with their stat selection. So I come here and I dig a little deeper looking at game logs and stuff like that. And finally, the last tool that I like to use when I uh, go and evaluate single stat stuff is uh, Rotowire. Rotowire.com has a fantastic little board here that shows all of the player props from various uh, books here. So you got the DraftKings Sportsbook, the FanDuel Sportsbook, you got the Bet MGM Sportsbook, and you've got Points Bet Sportsbook. So you get a side by side comparison of all the different sports books and how they stack up when you're talking single stat. But 
just wanted to give you a quick overview, a rundown. And typically where I start is with like assists and rebounds. I don't really look at points a whole lot. And uh, we'll do that right now. And my starting point here is going to be over on Roto Grinders, as I mentioned. So we'll come over here and uh, we'll scroll over to, oh, let's see if we can get this figured out here. We're going to scroll. No, we're not going to scroll. There we go. Boom. We're going to look at assists. And you can see that everybody who's in this bright green color here is in a plus assist versus average situation. So this is, again, based on their archetype. Uh, the matchup in this situation here puts them in a, um, a positive in terms of what this team allows to that player's uh, player type. So you can see like Buddy Heald here is a plus 56.45%. So based on him being a shooting wing, he's in a good situation here to potentially get more assists than he typically would on a given night. So let's start with Buddy. He is up on the board on prize picks at three assists. So let's take a look at Buddy Heald and we'll look at the game totals first. Now this one, Tons of points on this on this game. 239 combined points. Spread is just three and a half. So lots of points are going to be scored and a tight spread, meaning the game should stay close and competitive. Now, I typically look for games when I'm targeting overs of totals of 230 or more points. So you can see this one, 239. It exceeds that 230 by quite a bit. And uh, it's looking really good in terms of fantasy upside, whether it be single points single stat points, single stat rebounds, or single stat assists, or even your fantasy points. <clears throat> this is shaping up to be a good game to target. So, Buddy Heald, let's just take a look here and see where Buddy has been <clears throat> falling in terms of his assists per game. And we'll start with a season average. So you see Buddy here is at 3.3. So that puts him over three. So, so far things are looking good. We'll look at his last 30. Three and a half in his last 30 games. So the average of three is looking quite nice here. And then finally, 4.2 in his last 10. So guys, so far so good, right, with Buddy Heald. His season average, 30-game average, and 10-game averages are all over three assists. Plus, we like the way that this game is shaping up in terms of totals and spread. So I'm liking the way things are looking here for Buddy Heald. But we'll take it a step further here, and we'll look at Rotowire. Now, down at the bottom here, you got this little handy toolbar. We click the assist button, and then we just type in Buddy's name. All right, so you can see that on these various sports books, not a lot of juice going on here on DraftKings. If we look at FanDuel, they've got him as a betting favorite to go over. And the same for BetMGM. They have him going over three and a half. So this is an easy click for me. Uh, Buddy Heald over three assists looking like the way to go based on the way everything seems to line up for him. So definitely want to put that one in my lineup tonight. So we'll rinse and repeat here. We'll start back and look at maybe some of these other guys. Is Kelly Oubre, Andrew Wiggins on the board. Those guys look to be in a situation where they could potentially go over. Um, I don't see them up on the board. Looks like for Golden State, it's just Steph Curry right now. Let's see who else is standing out. Is DeAndre Ayton on the board? Ayton's not on the board. Um, Michael Bridges not on the board. So a lot of these Phoenix guys are in plus situations in terms of assists, making them good candidates to go over. Now, here's a guy that some people in the Discord were talking about, TJ McConnell, who's in a plus 26.63% assist versus average situation, meaning that uh, the Denver Nuggets give up more assists to players of TJ McConnell's classification than they typically do. So this is looking like a good spot. Maybe we could uh, target TJ McConnell. So let's take a look at him real quick. He's at five assists. So we're liking the way that things are uh, looking for TJ McConnell here. Five assists. Let's see if uh, the game totals seem to back that up here. So we got to go find Indiana. And they're taking on the Nuggets. So that game totals at 224, not terrible. The spread, four and a half, looking pretty competitive. Doesn't look like it's going to be a blowout. So I'd probably put it in the green to yellow range in terms of blowout risk or blowout potential. So not a ton of points versus like the first game we looked at where they were at 239 uh, game total. This one's at 224. So good, but not great. But anyway, we can move on. 
We already talked about he's in a plus assist situation here. So let's go find the Indiana Pacers on lineups.com and see where they shape up here. So we'll go to season average first. We'll work our way up to his last 10 game average and kind of see how things are trending for him. So for the season, he has averaged 6.4 assists, which puts him well over five. So, so far, so good, right? 6.4 assists looking good. And then we'll go to his last 30 games. And TJ McConnell in his last 30 has averaged 6.4, so still looking good for an over. And then finally, McConnell in his last 10 drops down a little bit to 6.2, but still that's plenty, plenty to get us over five. So, so far so good here. He's in a plus situation in terms of matchup with the Nuggets allowing more assists per game to guys like TJ McConnell. And for his season average, uh, his 30 game average and his 10 game averages, all of them exceed five. So this is looking like another good pick here in terms of taking the over. But last but not least, we're going to check the various sports books here and see how they uh, rank on McConnell. If I can see my dog on keyboard. Uh, and it doesn't look like he's on the board right now for any of the various sports books. So we don't have that to rely on. We can't see how people are betting when it comes to TJ McConnell over or under on the assist. But guys, I got a good feeling here about TJ McConnell and the over. So I'm probably going to lock that one in as well. So, so far that's Buddy Heald over assists and TJ McConnell over assists looking like some good picks. Now let's go back here to Roto Grinders and see what else stands out to us. Who else is on the board that we could potentially target here? Devin Booker, he's on the board. He's at four and a half assists. Uh, so Devin Booker, is in a situation where the Memphis Grizzlies are allowing almost 25% more assists per game versus their average to players who fit the archetype that uh, Devin Booker fits in, which is going to be scoring wing. So he's a scoring wing. He'll be facing up against Desmond Bain, probably a favorable matchup, I would say. So let's go back here and look at the game totals and spread of this one. So Memphis and Phoenix looking like a pretty good amount of points being scored when you combine the two teams' totals. Spread is a little worrisome, though. It is a seven-point spread. Phoenix, the seven-point home favorite. So, uh, yeah, I can't put this in the green in terms of uh, being a safe game, one that may not blow out. It looks like it could run away here in terms of the Grizzlies getting potentially left behind by this Phoenix Suns team. So a little bit worrisome, but luckily for us, four and a half assists isn't a huge, huge number. And I think it's something that Devin Booker could potentially achieve in even uh, three or three and a half quarters of gameplay. So let's move on to lineups.com. Let's see if they have some uh, averages for the season, averages for the last 30 games, and averages for the last 10 games for Devin Booker. All right, so sometimes you get this where you click on a team and uh, the individual player doesn't come up or the team doesn't come up for some reason. So when that happens, you just click season and then you can go here and you can just type in and search for who it is you're looking for so there's Devin Booker so for the season 4.6 assists that puts him over this four and a half number so far so good now let's go ahead and look at his last 30 there's Booker again last 30 his assists are actually up 4.8 still puts him over four and a half and then we'll look at his last 10 games and see how he has fared there we go. And he's actually going up. His assists are trending upward. So you can see that his season average, his 30 game average, and his 10 game average, his assists have slowly but steadily climbed. He's at five and a half assists in his last 10 games. So looking pretty good so far for Devin Booker. Last thing we're going to check is the sports books and see how people are betting for Devin Booker and this assist prop. So on DraftKings, not really seeing any juice one way or the other. Uh, you can see that on FanDuel Sportsbook, they are betting a slight under here on that. And if we move over to uh, BetMGM, he is at uh, a betting favorite to go under five and a half. So that's fine. If he goes under five and a half and lands on five, well, that's more than four and a half, right? So I think that uh, taking the over here on Devin Booker at uh Four and a half assists makes a lot of sense here because it looks like the way things are shaping up, yeah, maybe he doesn't go over five, but we don't need him to go over five. We just need him to go over four and a half. So if he lands on five, that's good money for us. So we'll take that one as well. So 
Now that you've seen some of the way that these tools work, um, you get an idea of how we can go and find some good overplays. Now, if I click this and we flip everything over to the red, well, then this could be a good way for us to tell who may go under on the assist. So who do we have here on the board? Do we have Bradley Beal on the assist board today? We do. He's at four and a half. Okay, this is a major negative assist versus average situation for Bradley Beal based on his archetype, which means he is a scoring wing. He'll be facing Dante DiVincenzo, and apparently the Milwaukee Bucks do a very good job at limiting guys like Bradley Beal in the assist category. So let's see if there's any um, merit to this situation. So if we look at the game totals, 242 and a half combined points in this game, guys. A uh, very rare thing to find two teams that are going to go for over 240 combined points. So that's pretty crazy when you think about that. I mean, you know, that's a that's a huge, huge number. Uh, so it makes me a little scared going under on anybody for fantasy points, single stats, uh, when you see a total that big. Now, the thing that might work out is the fact that the Bucks are an 8.5 point favorite, meaning this game has... Definite blowout risk, definite blowout potential here, especially the way the Wizards have come out of All-Star break, not looking very good lately. So um, let's move on here and start looking at some stats for Bradley Beal. So we'll flip this back to the season. We'll see if we can just do it by team here. Go to Washington and boom, it comes right up for most teams. So for the season, he's at 4.6 assists, which would put him over. His last 30, 4.6 assists. And finally, his last 10, 4.5 assists. So he's been at the 4.5 to 4.6 assist number throughout most of the season here. So, you know, he is in a negative assist versus average situation against this Bucks team. If we go back over here to Rotowire, we can see if there's any juice going over or under on Bradley Beal. Now, you can see the way people are betting here. Bradley Beal, four and a half assists. People are taking the under on DraftKings. They're taking the under on FanDuel. They're taking the under on BetMGM. And they're taking the under on four and a half assists on points bet as well. So, Bradley Beal, prime candidate to go under four and a half assists. I'm liking the way that's looking. All right. Let's see if there's anybody else starting off on uh, Roto Grinders once again. Um... Kyle Anderson, is he on the board? You have to do a little bit of hunting and searching here as I move through these names and through this list here. He is not on the board. LaMelo Ball, he should be on the board. I would be surprised if he wasn't. Okay, he's at seven assists today. Seven assists for LaMelo Ball, but you could see that based on his archetype versus this Sacramento Kings team, um, he is at a negative 22.39% assist versus average situation. So... It would seem that these uh, this matchup here uh, isn't a good one against the Sacramento Kings. So we'll go back here. We'll look at the game totals and spread. 239 combined points. <clears throat> Hornets, three and a half point favorites at home. So high totals. The spread is um, tight, competitive. Doesn't look like it's going to blow out. So that makes me a little worrisome, again, when taking the unders on any of these guys. But... Let's start looking at some of the stats here and seeing if LaMelo Ball under seven assists makes any sense based on his averages and stuff. All right, so we got Charlotte selected here. All right, and we can look at the assist for the season for LaMelo Ball at 6.4, so that puts him under seven. So far, so good. And then we look at his assists for his last 30 games, 6.8. Now that's creeping closer to seven, but it's still under seven, so so far, so good still. And then finally, 6.9. So his assists are trending up. Now, you got to remember, he's been inserted into the starting lineup here recently. So that might have an impact. He's playing a lot more minutes than he was when they started the season. So things are trending up for LaMelo Ball. But as you can see, his 30 game uh, season average, 30 game and 10 game averages are all under seven assists. So I am liking the under so far in this matchup. Now, the last thing that I like to look at is, of course, how people are betting on this. Now, I'm not seeing LaMelo Ball on here. You know, no props for LaMelo Ball yet, so we can't see how people are betting on the various sports books. But if I'm leaning one way or the other on LaMelo Ball, it's probably going to be on the under seven assists. They've got Devontae Graham healthy, Terry Rozier's in there, of course, Gordon Hayward's in there. So, 
yeah, it could be difficult for him to go over seven assists. Eight assists would be tough for him. So I'm liking the under on LaMelo Ball. I think that makes some sense. Let's see if there's anybody else worth talking about before we move on to rebounds. Um, Marvin Bagley, he's not up on the board for Sacramento. Harrison Barnes, not on the board. Wiseman, he's not on the board. Mm, Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, as you can see, this far right column here, this one is where all of the negative assist situations are. And, uh, you know, the, there, there's some other ones here that we could dig a little deeper on, but I'm just going to stick to the ones that are toward the top of the list, some of the stronger plays. But you get an idea kind of what goes into the research. So, you know, we talked about uh, three guys or four guys there in terms of assists. Let's talk about some rebounds now. So if we go to the rebounds column and we hit that, you could see that it brings up everybody who's in a plus rebound situation tonight. And uh, the first guy that's jumping out is going to be Drew Holiday. Now, he's at four and a half rebounds, and he's in a plus rebound versus average matchup versus the Washington Wizards tonight. So let's start looking at this game. And we've already talked about the totals are super, super high in this one, 242 and a half points uh, projected to be scored here. So let's go ahead and look at lineups.com, and we'll see if we can get some information on Drew Holiday and how he's performed in the rebound category this season. So you can see for the season, his average is 4.4. That puts him under 4.5. So, so far, a little shaky. Last 30, 4.4, putting him under 4.5. And And finally, 3.9 in his last 10 games. So all of his averages are under 4.5. So if we're looking to take the over on Drew Holiday, well, there might be a little bit of risk in doing that. Of course, working in his favor is the fact that there are so many points expected to be scored here. And we'll go back to Rotowire. We'll click the little rebound button down on the toolbar on the bottom. And uh, we'll look for Drew Holiday and see if they have him up. And they do. So the various sports books have him as a betting favorite on DraftKings to go over four and a half. He is a betting favorite on FanDuel to go over four and a half. He is a betting favorite on BetMGM to go over four and a half and the same on points bet. They all like him to go over four and a half. And so, you know, you got to hope that his minutes are up. He's been somewhat limited since coming back from that long layoff for the Milwaukee Bucks. But it looks like all signs are pointing to a over for Drew Holiday in this four and a half rebounds projection. I think that's the way to go despite his averages working against him. Do I have supreme confidence in it? No, but if I were to lean one way or the other, it's going to be over given the game totals and the spread here. So that's what we've got for Drew Holiday. Let's take a look here and see who else is jumping out. Now we mentioned Buddy Heald already for assists, but he's also in a good rebound situation from the looks of things. Not quite as good as the assist. You can see the assists are 56.45%. The rebounds are just at a plus 9.89. Let's just round it up and say he's in a plus you know, 10% rebound versus average situation. So he's at 4.5 on prize picks. Let's take a look and see how that looks um, based on his season averages, 30-game averages, 10-game averages, and see if we can get a better idea on Buddy Heald here. So we go down, we find Sacramento. We've already got it set to season averages. And you can see for the season... Four and a half rebounds is basically a push based on where where he's projected on prize picks today. So we look at the last 30 games, Buddy Heald trending upward, 4.7 rebounds in his last 30. So that's on the rise. That's looking good. And then finally in his last 10, 4.2 rebounds drops back down in his last 10. So a little shaky here. We're not seeing a clear over for Buddy Heald in this particular situation. So last but not least, we'll head over to Rotowire and see if we can find some more information on Buddy Heald. And uh, he is up on the various sports books at four and a half rebounds. So DraftKings, they're betting the under on Buddy Heald. On FanDuel, they're betting the under. On BetMGM, they are betting the under. And finally, points bet, they are pretty much torn here on Buddy Heald over under. So Not a super strong play. I think I like him for the assist prop more than I like the rebound prop, but there's a little bit of credibility here to taking the over on Buddy Heald with the high game totals, the close spread. 
and uh, the fact that he's been hovering around four and a half rebounds for most of the season. So there you have it on him. Is there anybody else that is worth talking about here? We got Giannis Attentacumpo. He's in a plus rebound situation here. They got him at 12 rebounds, though, man. That seems super, super high. Let's just dig into Giannis real quick, and then we'll look at some of the guys that may, may make for good under candidates in their uh, given matchups tonight. So he's at 12 rebounds. We'll go over and look at uh, lineups.com real quick. Filter everything out. Look for Milwaukee. Boom. There we go. And you can see for the season, he is averaging 11.6 rebounds, which puts him under 12. We go back to his last 30 now. He's at 11.7. So rebounds are trending upward in his last 30 games. And finally, in his last 10, they are trending up yet again. 12.1 rebounds in his last 10 games. That would be good enough, barely, for an over on Giannis Attentacumpo rebounds on prize picks. So, <clears throat> finally we're going to go and look for Giannis and there he is so he is up on the various sports books but he's at a number of different props here so DraftKings has him at 11 and a half people are betting the over on the 11 and a half makes some sense now at 12 and a half FanDuel they're betting the under so that kind of leads you to believe that 12 is a good landing spot for Giannis Attentacumpo here in uh, Bet MGM, they've got him going over 11 and a half. And on points bet, they've got him going over 11 and a half. So 12 ish in that range seems to be appropriate for Giannis Attentacumpo. So if you believe that with the high game totals, with the fact that his rebounds are trending upwards, with a slight bump in terms of uh, rebound average in this particular matchup here, then I would probably lean toward the over on Giannis Attentacumpo in this 12 rebound prop. All right, so now that we've looked at some of the overs, let's look at some of the candidates for unders. And you can see with these high numbers here in the red, that would lead you to believe that guys with those high red numbers wouldn't get as many rebounds in this given matchup. <clears throat> so the first guy that stands out is LaMelo Ball. Now he's at six and a half rebounds. He is in a negative 39 and a half percent rebound versus average situation versus the Sacramento Kings tonight. So let's take a look at LaMelo Ball and look at his rebound props, his rebound averages for the season. And there we have the Charlotte Hornets selected. And you can see that for the season, 6.1 rebounds. That puts him under 6.5. So the under looking like the way to go based on season average. But we don't just stop there. We go a little further here and we look at the last 30. Now he's at 6.5 rebounds, which puts him directly on the prize picks projection of six and a half, making it a push situation. And then finally, 7.1 rebounds in his last 10. So he has been trending upwards in terms of rebounds here. A uh, little, little scary, a little sketchy, a little dicey to take LaMelo Ball under rebounds. But we're going to go a little further here. We're going to take a look and see if the various sports books have him going over or under. Uh, he's, he's not Bell, he's Ball. So let's type his name in correctly. He's not coming up, so he's not on any of the various sports books right now for this rebound prop, but it's a little dicey. So the matchup's not good whatsoever, but his averages are trending up. Now, it's going to be up to you to decide. Do you want to take the over or under on LaMelo Ball? It's a high game total. It's a pretty decent spread here in terms of it staying close and competitive. Um, yes, the, the Hornets are now at full speed. So you've got Devontae Graham back, Gordon Hayward, Terry Rozier in the mix. All these guys are, uh, you know, going to be healthy and playing a good amount of minutes. So this is going to be more of a coin flip for me. I can't call it. Maybe you can drop a comment down in the comment section below LaMelo ball over six and a half rebounds or under six and a half rebounds. You tell me what you think. All right, let's see if there's anybody else who's in a bad spot here for rebounds. And yes, Bradley Beal jumping off the page at me. A negative 35 and a half or more percent for rebounds. Now, he's at 30, I'm sorry, he's at five rebounds on prize picks. Five rebounds. So let's take a look again here at lineups.com. We already know that the game totals from this game are super high. And when totals are high, that means more shots are flying up, meaning more chances for points for rebounds, for assists. So it's a little sketchy, again, taking the under on a guy like Bradley Beal, who's in a high-scoring game. 
So if we look at his season average, he's at 5.3 rebounds. That puts him over five. So already the unders looking a little questionable. 5.4 rebounds in his last 30, putting him over five once again. And in his last 10, five and a half rebounds. So he is over in his season average, his 30, 30 game average and his 10 game averages, he is over five rebounds. So ooh, I don't know with the averages being what they are, with the game totals being what they are, it's going to be tough for me to click the under on Bradley Beal. But let's see if he's up on the various sites here, the different sports books. All right. And he is. Now, the way that people are betting on this, five and a half rebounds on DraftKings, they're betting the under here, which means he would land on five or less. Uh, five and a half on FanDuel, they're betting the under as well. And if we scroll over here, bet MGM under on the five and a half, the way to go, and under on points bet on that five and a half. So everybody thinks that five seems to be the number or less. So if I'm betting any way here on Bradley Beal, it's probably going to be the under based on everything uh, that I'm seeing here, taking it all into consideration. But I don't feel super strong or super good about it. But I, I will let you guys decide on that one. That's a tough one to figure out once again. Both LaMelo Ball and Bradley Beal on these rebound props over or under are going to be tricky, tricky situations. Um, anybody else here jumping off? Nope. Uh, I don't think so. You got Russell Westbrook. He's in a slight negative rebound situation. So that could be a way to go. If you guys want to dig in and look at some stats on Russell Westbrook, you now know how you have all the websites and the information that I use to help make these decisions. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Let's just look at points real quick. I don't do a whole lot of points, but um, there are some tools here that could be potentially helpful. So one of the tools that I look at is, or one of the columns that I look at here is shots versus average. So this is the amount of shots that a particular player based on their archetype is expected to get versus the average that the opposing team gives up. So typically Charlotte, let's say they give up, I don't know, uh, 20 shots per game to guys like Buddy Heald or just 20 shots per game in general, sorry. 20 shots per game in general. Then you factor in that Buddy Heald being a scoring wing or shooting wing. Uh, they give up 32% more shots versus their average to shooting wings. So this is a plus situation where Buddy Heald should get more shots up than he typically would. Um, let's look at uh, Buddy Heald here. He, he's at 17 and a half points. He's, he's just looking like a popular play in general for a lot of overs here. Buddy Heald's at 17 and a half. Let's go look at his averages and see if uh, Buddy Heald makes any sense taking the over tonight. There we go. We got Sacramento all dialed up. And you can see for the season, Buddy's averaging 16.3 points, which puts him under. In his last 30, he is up to 16.6. And then in his last 10, he goes up again to 18. 18 points per game in his last 10. So... There's a good chance that he goes over with the game totals and everything being so high in this one. And finally, we can go over to Rotowire and find Buddy on there and see how people are betting on Buddy tonight. On this 17 and a half, they've got him on DraftKings. Uh, people are betting the over. 17 and a half on FanDuel, they're betting the over. 17 and a half on MGM, they're betting the over. And 17 and a half on points bet, they are betting the over. So there you go, guys. Over on Buddy Heald, looking like a way to go. He should be getting up more shots than he typically would um, on average. So there's one way to go. Who else? Do we have Andrew Wiggins, Kelly Oubre on the board for Golden State. Points? No, we don't. Um, Julius Randle, he should be up there. He should be up there. So he's at 24 and a half points in his um, matchup tonight. The Brooklyn Nets are giving up. 20% uh, more shots versus their average to versatile bigs like Julius Randle. So that could be a way to go. And um, it looks like they're giving up uh, a little bit of a bump in field goal percentage versus the average too. So this is a plus situation for Julius Randle. Let's see if we can find him real quick and look at how his stats and everything are lining up here for the season. So we scroll down, we go to New York. And nothing comes up. So we got to do our little tricky trick that I showed you before where you just basically have to search for the guy. 
All right, so Julius Randle for the season, 22.9 points. That puts him under this 24 and a half. So let's look at his last 30 real quick. We'll just search for him once again. Uh, 23 points, so a little bit better there. And then finally in his last 10, he's at 22.3. So, yeah, it looks like the under has been the way to go on Julius Randle. Um, looking at the game totals here between these two New York teams, Looks like it's going to be a blowout potentially. Not a ton of points. 223 is the total here for uh, these two teams when you combine their outputs. Um, so, yeah, I could see that maybe going the un under might be the way to go. Let's just finally look at him on this site. 24 and a half prop. Not getting a lot of juice one way or the other. Um, looks like on FanDuel, they're, they're taking the under on him. Over on BetMGM, they're taking the over. And on PointsBet, they're taking the over, but that's at 23 and a half. So yeah, this is probably a situation that I would just avoid, even though he does look like he's in a plus uh, shots uh, matchup here. Another metric that you could look at is like the field goal percentage versus average. So um, guys who fit a certain archetype in their matchups here are probably going to have a higher field goal percentage that the opposing team is allowing. So like someone like Gordon Hayward versus Sacramento, uh, his field goal percentage based on his archetype should go up in this matchup versus Sacramento, meaning more of his shot should fall, which means hopefully he scores more real life points for you. So let's look at Gordon Hayward real quick. He's at 20 and a half. And based on that, we will see if going over or under that 20 and a half makes any sense here. So Hayward for the season is averaging 21 points. That puts him over 20 and a half. So I like that so far. Gordon Hayward for his last 30 games, 21.1. Definitely liking that. It's looking good, looking good. And then, wow, things come crashing down 16.8 points in his last 10 games. I think he's been like a little bit banged up in and out of the lineup. So Last but not least, we're going to take a look at Gordon Hayward here. And there's only one site that has a scoring or points prop up for Gordon Hayward. They got him at 20 and a half on points bet. But as you can see, the juice, the juice is split. They don't really have a strong under or over read on Gordon Hayward. So um, that's going to be one that's going to be a little tougher to figure out here. But if you do believe in this little field goal percentage versus average being a plus situation for Gordon Hayward, well, then maybe a couple more shots drop for him that normally wouldn't drop. So that could be a way to go in terms of taking the over on his 20 and a half, especially when you consider that the game totals are so high and it's going to be, you know, pretty competitive game throughout. But that's going to do it for today's video. What do you guys think? Are you liking the single stat video today? Is there anything that stood out to you? Uh, have you learned something? Am I bringing you value? If so, hit the thumbs up button. Let's go for 30 likes on today's video. I'm actually going to take the over, the over on 30 likes on this video. I think we can do it. There's a ton of you guys out there and I know, I know you guys love this video. So let me know that you do by hitting that like button. But that's going to do it for now. My name's CJ for Out of Bounds DFS. Good luck tonight. And until the next one, guys, let's win some money. Peace out.